Lesson 3, Fourier Analysis Part 1. With this lesson, we're going to begin our two-part series on Fourier analysis. We're going to introduce the idea um, behind Fourier series and then move on to Fourier transforms. Fourier analysis is one of those mathematical tools that's uh, used commonly in many different areas, particularly in engineering, in signal processing, in image processing, in image compression. It's used in physics to find solutions of complicated equations in terms of uh, uh, much more easy, easier to handle uh, simpler functions, and also in mathematics. So uh, this first lesson will be uh, con uh, concerned with uh, Fourier series. And we're going to begin with step one, uh, the introduction, the main idea behind what Fourier series is all about. In the previous lessons, we have seen many examples of superposition of waves. We were given some wave components or waves of different types, and then we asked what is the resulting wave if we add the two waves together, or many waves together. One example was, for example, the um, a standing wave, when we had two identical waves traveling in opposite directions, producing uh, a nice standing wave. Here, let's begin by considering the following uh, superposition. We've got some function of x defined as the sum of um, cosine j and x, where x is the spatial component and j is some integer index ranging from 1 going all the way up to n. So we've got a superposition of various uh, waves. This wave is, uh, is uh, oscillating at frequency 1, this one at frequency 2, frequency 3, and so on. And we would like to know what happens to the overall superposition, the overall function f of x. So let's plot that. For f of uh, um, cosine of uh, uh, x, we have the simple component resulting in a very simple superposition because there's just only one term in the sum. But now we're going to add the second, the um, cosine oscillating at twice the frequency of the first component. And we get the following superposition. We can see that in the middle, where the two components' peaks overlap, we've got a constructive interference, so they reinforce each other, we've got a higher peak. And for example, here at the tails, at minus pi, and at pi we get a zero, because there we can observe destructive interference. And we can keep adding more and more components, and which will result in a different superposition. So, so far, uh, up until this point, we always had um, the question, given the components, what is the su resulting superposition? With this lesson and this step, we're going to flip the question around. We're going to ask, given the superposition, or given the function f of x, how can we decompose it into its simple components? In this case, if I gave you this uh, function over here, represented by this uh, black line, what is, the, what is the systematic way of writing down the following, uh, following sum? So how can we find these frequencies that enter into the cosines, and how can we find also the coefficients which are in front of these cosines? In this example, these coefficients, these weights, are all set to 1. But generally, this is not going to be the case. And that's the idea behind Fourier series. A Fourier series is a representation of a periodic function as weighted sum of harmonic functions. Periodic in this sense means that the function repeats itself after some uh, interval p, which is the period uh, of the function. And we have seen many periodic functions. For example, the most simple ones are cosines and sines. But from this lesson onwards, we're going to be uh, concerned also with slightly uh, more um, exotic functions, but that are very prevalent, for example, in sig signal processing, such as the step function. Here, we can see that the function repeats itself. It's 1 on the interval minus pi to minus pi, then it flips to minus 1. And then after uh, uh, interval pi, again, it flips to 1. So we see that the period is 2 pi, similar to cosine uh, x and sine x. Now, what do we mean by harmonic functions? By harmonic functions, we mean the following functions, cosine x, cosine 2x, cosine 3x. So we saw in our previous example that if we take the equal superposition of these waves, we get some nice resulting function. Can we use these functions, just the cosines, to represent any function, any periodic function? And the answer is no. The reason behind that is that all of these functions, cosine x, cosine 2x, are even functions. What that means is that the value f of x is the same as f of minus x. 
Another simple example of an even function is just a simple quadratic, f of x equals to x squared. And this is its graph over here. Here it's very obvious that if I take the value of the function at position x, it's equal to the value of the function at position minus x. And if we take a superposition of uh, even functions, the resulting uh, function will be even as well. Therefore, we cannot represent any periodic function just in terms of cosines. We would like to be able to represent odd functions as well. For example, here you can see an odd function, a simple f of x is equal to x, where it's clear that the value of the function f of f at uh, position x is not the same at uh, position minus x. It's in fact negative. So in order to represent function, odd functions, we need some odd harmonics as well. And these are given by signs. We will, we will have sine x, sine 2x, uh, sine 3x, and so on. So here, this is the definition of the odd function. That uh, If I look at the function at position minus x, I'm going to get minus the value of the function at position plus x. So now that we understand what we mean by harmonic functions, the main question is how do we de determine the weights of these harmonic functions? How do we determine the coefficients of each of these harmonic that enter into the sum? And we're going to spend the rest of this lesson answering this question. So see you in the next step.